Waiting for the live. Waiting for the live. Is it ready? Okay, I think it says that it's ready now. Hopefully I'm actually live. Hey, hey everybody. Um, so uh, I was expecting to do this so quickly. Uh, <laughs> where are all you people coming from? But I did hit 9,000 subs. Um, oh, let's see. Emma Rose, thanks for asking me from going to bed early. Wine and some snacks. Tuck in, Emma, let's do this. Um, so I wasn't expecting to do this so soon because I don't know where all these people are coming from, but I, I hit 9,000 subs. I grew like 10% in a month. I don't know. Um, I'm happy for all you new people to be here. Um, but anyway, I wanted to celebrate in some way. And so I thought I would go live and talk about favorite things of 2019 that are not bookishly related. Oh, and look, there's more people. Okay. Hi, Matt. Hi, Sparkly Unicorn. I really like your, your handle. That always makes me smile. Hi, Kimberly, Alicia, Nima. Cool. So um, welcome, everyone. Oh, yes. Thanks, Alicia. So I am wearing a Christmas sweater because I'm going to a Christmas party tonight. So, you know, tis the season and all. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we will talk about some of my favorite things that I enjoyed this year that were not specifically related to books. So I don't know, we'll start, we'll start with housewares. How about that? Hey, Tia. Okay, so um, I have two drinking things I wanted to show you guys. So one is that before I did my rebranding, one of my friends had a little, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this very well, but she had a stemless wine glass made for me that says books like whoa with my old branding. And I just thought that was such a thoughtful gift. So this has been one of my favorite little things to enjoy around the house. And then Leanna from Leanna's library gave me a straight out of St. Mary Mead mug. I guess both of these are technically bookish related, but you, you take my point. But I love this. This is a Miss Marple mug. So I enjoy having my tea in that. That was loud. Um, another house related thing. I So many of my favorite things this year have been related to um, my house because I moved. I bought a house this year. So I have all kinds of fun, like tchotchkes and like furniture and stuff that I bought that I loved. Um, but things that I can show you, I found this at Target and I just, it's a swallow and it's an incredibly basic bitch decoration, but I love it. <laughs> it's like this little, this little guy, he sits out on my front area. So anyway, those are some house related things I enjoy. Did you hear that? I almost broke my mug. That would have been really bad. Glad I didn't. A, uh, let's see here. Ooh. Another thing I enjoyed this year was that I have fallen very in love with Bones Coffee, even though I have to tell you guys, I'm very pissed because they used to send this in 16 ounces and now they send it in 12 ounces and charge you the same amount, which is some bullshit, but I'm addicted. So I guess I just have to deal with it. But all of their, like, can you guys see how cool their little branding here is? All of their coffee bags have like little skeletons in them and it's so cute. And they have so many really yummy flavors. I've been obsessed with the cinnamon recently. Um, so this is like cinnamon flavored coffee. So I've been enjoying that. Oh gosh, what else have I enjoyed? Um, movie wise, I haven't seen a lot of movies this year. Oh, hi Chain. Um, hey Deborah. Yes, I hate hidden price increases. I think it's very rude. Um, I haven't seen a lot of movies, but I have seen two movies that I very much enjoyed this year. So I saw the Mr. Rogers movie, which I think it's called, um, Won't You Be My Neighbor? I think that was the name of it. Whatever that like most recent Mr. Rogers movie that came out was, I enjoyed, I cried four times. I wore no mascara to that preview because I just knew, like I knew that I was gonna, I was gonna cry. So yes, I cried many times in that movie. I thought it was very sweet. Um, and then the, my favorite movie so far of the year was Knives Out. So I actually recorded an entire review of that. But if you don't know, Knives Out is a whodunit that came out over American Thanksgiving. And um, it's amazing. <laughs> so it's the kind of movie I wish that we would get more of. But, uh, you know, I, for whatever reason, I don't understand why they don't make more whodunits as movies because people love them on TV. But this is an original movie. It had a great cast and it just was like so much fun all around. So I'm going to have a full, um, oh, sorry, I should probably put that on quiet. 
Um, I'm going to have a full review of that that goes up just because it is a whodunit. And if you, I decided to use it as a case of how you can kind of figure out who the murderer is in a whodunit. So if you watch that movie, I'm then going to talk about the clues that we got pretty early on as to who done it because I figured that out pretty quickly. So you guys can look for that soon. Let's see. You are my Mr. Roger source on Twitter. I do. Okay. So I follow a Mr. Roger quote account and it just fills my heart with warmth. So I do retweet Mr. Rogers quite a bit. Um, Chang is planning to go see Knives Out. You definitely should. It's really good. Um, those movies still have to come out here, but I'm so excited for Knives Out. Alicia, I think you'll really like it. It's, it's a really, really good movie. And it has like so much political commentary baked into it. It's great. Um, yes, a lot of people recommended Knives Out to me because when they saw the trailer, they knew I would love it. What's my favorite board game? Strange question, but I'm looking for some new ones. I'm very boring. I love Clue. Who is surprised? anyone. Um, Clue is my favorite. Me and my nieces play that and they kick my ass. So there you go. And then um, I like uh, Settlers of Catan. Again, pretty basic answer there, but I don't know. It's just, it brings out, and I like any board game that brings out ugly sides of your friends um, and, you know, potentially can ruin relationships. That's always fun. So pretty basic, but that's my answer right now. Actually, you know what? Speaking of board games, one of my favorites. So something I started doing this year is when people come over, I do I give them a tarot card reading. I am not good at it, but it's so fun. And especially if you've been drinking, this is such a fun like party trick, basically. Um, I don't really believe in this stuff too much, but I just think it's it's just fun. I don't know. Like, and actually, I will tell you that I. Like, I'm a decent reader. I'm, I've given some people some like serious tea in my readings, but I recommend this uh, if you are looking for a fun thing to do with your guests when they come over. I also really love this deck. It's called the Smith Weight Tarot deck, and it's that traditional, like, stereotypical tarot look. Um, so, anyway, that's been fun this year. I've enjoyed doing that with people over wine. Um, I've lost so many friends over Uno. Uno is not for the faint of heart. Um, and if you are a pussy and you don't reverse on your friend, then you don't deserve to play, I think. Evil Mara is being through, yes. Yes, I definitely have an evil side. So that's something else I've enjoyed doing this year. Oh, I can't show it to you, but I have this big charcuterie board that I like bringing out for people um, when they come over. That's another thing I've enjoyed discovering this year. What else can I show you favorites? Oh, okay. Well, we'll just move into like the beauty section because I have several things I found this year that I very much enjoyed. So my favorite palette that I have found and enjoyed this year was the Uh Huh Honey palette from ColourPop. So ColourPop put out, uh, gosh, too many, probably like 10 to 15 different monochromatic palettes this year. And ColourPop is actually really good quality, even though it's very inexpensive. Like these are only $12 each. And this is, I'm gonna try not to blind you guys. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but this is the yellow palette. And I just, I love using this. Like I never, it's always a very monochromatic yellow look when I do it. I always get compliments on it. And I just love like for my eye texture chemistry, ColourPop formula just lasts really well on me. So this is definitely my favorite new palette of the year. You will notice it is not the palette that we talked about in my last live because the more I've used that, the less impressed I've been with it and the more I'm just never gonna bother with that brand again. <laughs> LOL, love your sassy side. You sound super fun to hang out with. I mean, I think so. I think I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty fun. You can ask my friends what they think, I guess. Um, so yeah, so this was definitely my favorite palette of the year. Favorite new recipe of the year. Hmm. Favorite, have I, have I tried any new recipes this year? Um, I don't really think I have a favorite new recipe of the year. I'm so boring. I just make the same things over and over again. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that I've done new this year. Not really. Sorry, but I'm glad that you enjoyed Crooked House in Spanish. Yes, ColourPop is awesome. I'm glad you love it. Cluedo, too. Yeah, that's the other fun thing about Clue is that in the U.S. we call that board game Clue, and I think pretty much everywhere else it's referred to as Cluedo. And another fun fact about that board game is that it was created uh, in response to Agatha Christie. So there you go. 
Favorite video you made for YouTube? Oh, so I was going to, and then I didn't because I just was like, I'm not sure that I could get to this level. I don't know that I should get to this level of narcissism. <laughs> I was going to do sort of like a best of books like whoa video where I cut in all of my favorite moments of the year. Um, and I just decided that was a little narcissistic videos. I, I would say that the, the video I had the most fun doing was um, uh, what was it? When I was picking my horoscope. So horoscope picks my TBR challenge. That was really fun. Um, yeah, I think that's the one that I definitely had the best time doing. I had lots of fun little sassy moments. Like, I always like it when I'm in a good mood when I'm filming and I end up having, like, I feel like my personality fully comes out because, you know, sometimes you're more or less in the mood for these things. Um, and sometimes I feel like my personality always enjoys those little moments. I think it was back in either, I think it was in August. That wrap up, I was just in a super sassy mood that I did it. I think it was August. It was either August or October, and uh, enjoyed. I enjoyed how sassy I got in that video. So there you go. Um, okay, so that was my favorite palette. A favorite. So I'm somebody who, for lip stuff, tends to be very much like in a theme. So all fall, I have been. Oh yes, recapping Harry Potter while tipsy. Thank you. You're right. That is probably my favorite video I did this year. Yeah. You're 100% right. I had so much fun getting drunk and I had <laughs> I had so much fun seeing what drunk Mara said later. And apparently like my subconscious self is very focused on um, the Freudian imagery of Harry Potter, uh, on the fact that Harry and Hermione belong together and the fact that Snape is a grown ass adult who's a piece of shit because of the way treats Harry. That was apparently what Drunk Mara really thinks about Harry Potter. So yes, you're 1000% right, Evie. That was my best one. Um, yeah, that was that was good. So for lip stuff, lip favorites, uh, this fall, all you have seen me wearing in videos is this liquid lip, which is in the shade Just Add Marshmallows. It's like this really warm brownie color. Um, I've been obsessed with that in the fall. And then this, you'll be seeing a lot of videos of me wearing this from Bite Beauty. Oh, this is from Makeup Monsters, which is now Makeup Menagerie. And then this is from By Beauty, and this is in the color Red Velvet. And it's just like a perfect, cool toned, deep red lipstick that I very much enjoy. So that was for Lip, Harry Potter as the best books like Woe video of the year, which I get. Um, I'm gonna do, what did we decide it was gonna be called? Wine and Prejudice. My next drunk review or recap will be of Pride and Prejudice, but I have to be in the right mood for that. Um, I can't stop thinking about owning a Lisa Eldridge lipstick. I have heard of Lisa Eldridge, but I've never seen any of her content and therefore I'm not tempted by that, but I've heard that the quality is very nice. Uh, let's see. Well, okay, I guess to round out lips, the Laneige sleeping mask is the best like lip balmy kind of thing I've ever tried. So I have like three pots of this around my house and in my purse. And it's just, I'm almost done with this one, but it's just so good. I love it. So that's for lips. Uh, my favorite perfume I found this year was the Black Tulip from Nest. I very much enjoy this. This is like my, my date night perfume. You guys, I don't know why I smelled it as if by me smelling it, you would also enjoy the scent. Um, that's not how, that's not how the internet works, unfortunately. But it smells very, like it's a very sexy scent. It's sort of like a deep, I don't, I don't know how to describe scents, but it's just sort of, it makes me feel like a grown ass woman who's on the town ready to get laid, basically is, is the deal here. And it lasts for a really long time. Um, yeah, it's just, it's good shit. Chang, you should definitely read Pride and Prejudice. It's really, really good. One of my all-time faves, if you saw that video. So Matchstick, this one is in Cognac. This is my new thing because these are highlighters, but they have, the great thing about Fenty is that they have a bunch of, like they have something for every skin tone. So if you see, this is supposed to be a highlighter, but on me, wouldn't be a highlighter, but it makes a beautiful blush. It has like all of this lovely, like kind of a really glowy, beautiful cheek in a hurry. 
And I just think Fenty makes bomb ass products. Like they just, I feel like I've not tried anything from them that wasn't at least pretty good. So I enjoyed that. What else did I gather here? Um, I just ran, basically I just randomly went through my house guys and found things that I discovered this year that I liked. Um, I stuff, the Kaja Bento boxes. These are like the most beautiful glittery ass eyeshadows of all time. My horrible lighting and webcam will not let you see how pretty these are, but these are beautiful like eye toppers. And then I really love the milk mascara. I found that this year. So yeah, I think that's most of the beauty stuff I was going to talk about. Uh, oh, wait. Okay, so one question I get a lot. So I thought I would talk about it here. Um, so I can point people back to it is how I my hair, like for other people who have curly hair. Um, so I brought I brought the products that I have, I did just get my hair cut, like I just got back from it. So my hair doesn't look the way it normally does. But these are the things I use for my hair. So I use the Diva Curl Light Defining Gel. I scrunch that in when it's wet. And then I've been doing a lot of the different conditioning masks and my favorite is the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair. So if you're ever wondering what I use in my hair, it's these, these things. So I just, when it's wet, I scrunch it with all this shit in it and then I sleep on it wet and the next morning it just looks however it looks. You should produce a wine tones palette for makeup slash reader fans. Half blood prince blusher. Oh man, um, the beauty community is a savage place that I am not uh, equipped to deal with. But you know, I love me some makeup, so I like to be a fake, a fake booty guru up here on occasion. So let's see, what are my other favorites I was gonna tell you guys about? Um, Oh, okay. I thought maybe I could talk about favorite podcasts and favorite non booktube YouTube. Hey, Kayla. Welcome and thank you. Uh, favorite, well, let's just, let's just grab my, let's just grab my phone here. We'll look and see what my favorite podcasts of the year were. So some of these are going to be political guys. If you don't like that, just hold on to your butts. It's going to be okay. So I started listening to the Ezra Klein podcast this year and I really enjoyed that one. Um, it's a very, it's a very long podcast and it allows for a lot of like deep that one. Um, I've also started listening to the 538 podcast this year, which is the um, Nate Silver podcast. Uh, I think, I think their approach is a little simplistic at times, but I appreciate what they're doing. So I'll give that to them at least. Let's see here. Hi, Diana. Where are you located? I'm in Quebec. Oh, bonjour. Um, Quebec. I've been to Quebec City. Actually, my mother is in Quebec City right now at the Christmas market. Uh, so it's a beautiful province. I lived in Vancouver for a long time. I'm a, everybody knows if you watch my channel, I'm a stand for Canada. I live in here. I know you're dating and I so wish I could have somewhere to talk about this with other people. Dating is hell slash hilarious and few people share their stories. Part of it um, because I have no room for subtext. I'm somebody who is all text in a relationship. So I just cannot play any of the games with it. And I therefore get very impatient and end up bailing after a couple of dates. So let's see here. And the high low, I don't know what the high low is, Chang. You'll have to tell me about that. Let's see here. Can I talk a bit about my face care routine? I have started keeping things very simple. So I, in the morning, I wash my face. Step one, so expensive, I can't justify it, but I do really like, like the Drunk Elephant Jelly Cleanser. I like that one. Right now I'm using the, what is it called? First Aid Skin Care, that wash, because it was it was during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, that's fine. So I do that in the morning, then I do the um, Sunday Riley Lactic Acid. I don't think I'm gonna keep repurchasing that, because I think it helped get my skin back to a good place, but I've noticed when I don't use it for a few weeks, I don't really see a huge difference anymore. 
So I think I'm gonna stop using that regularly, but normally I do that. Then I use the Kate Somerville anti-back like spot treatment for any like pimples or burgeoning pimples I have. And then my favorite moisturizer in the day is the um, Aqua Bomb from Belief. I think that is a really nice moisturizer. And I think for a high-end moisturizer, pretty reasonably priced. So I do that in the morning and then in the evening, I wash my face, I do a glycolic acid from The Ordinary. Sometimes I use the Drunk Elephant, the pink top with the AHA, whatever that thing is. And then I use The Ordinary's Rosehip Seed Oil as my moisturizer. Sometimes as like a, a treatment kind of thing, I like the exfoliator that they have that makes your skin ball up. I like that occasionally, and then sometimes I'll do a nose strip if I'm a strip if I'm a little congested. River, sorry, I cannot hear which city you're in. Uh, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, dating in 2019 is the absolute worst. Dating apps are just awful. Weekly ladies also super uplifting and entertaining. Okay, well, good to know. I will have to check that one out. Yes, I was talking about podcasts. I like. Okay, so. What else do I like? I like the full coverage podcast that's about beauty. So I enjoy that. That was good. good. Um, let's see. Other so I enjoy that. That was good. Um, let's see here. Other ones I found this year. I always like Ono oh Ross and Carrie. I've listened to that one for a long time. Um, I started listening to the Read Me Romance podcast. So if you're looking for free smutty audiobooks. That one is good. So I enjoy that. That one is good. So I enjoy that. Uh, and then, oh yeah, I've slate podcasts. So I like Slow Burn. Right now they're doing a series on um, the Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls murders. Those are really good. So I've been listening to that. I listened to um, I started listening, <clears throat> excuse me, I started listening more to the Dear Prudence podcast on Slate. I really like that. It's like an advice show and it's got um, Daniel Mallory Ortberg. That one's really good. And then um, What Next is sort of like just a daily news show that I like from Slate. Uh, and then Slate Money, that's a new one that I started listening to this year. They usually have some pretty interesting sort of businessy type things. Yeah, so those are some of the podcasts I started listening to this year. Here. Here. to Pirateland. Yes, that was really fun. That was another fun one to do mostly just because Book Nat Fest was so much fun. He's on other podcasts. You know, um, which I think she has really smart takes. You guys know that series? Um, who else have I got in this year? Oh, I started watching... Um, you guys know that series that, God, what is it? I, that's what that channel is called. He just like takes you around how creepily empty they are. And he'll go to like abandoned hotels, abandoned motels. It's kind of creepy, but somehow weirdly poignant. I've gotten into that this year. No bullshit reviews. Um, I like her. Oh God, there's so many people. I feel like I've increased my internet. I do so much. Content for because I just have so many in a year, so you probably see more videos from me than I normally do. Um, so, I, um, 